Oh hi, I'm Blackbright and today I wanted to talk about something. I'm not very experienced on it so I'm going to have to read most of it but I received a letter from a lady and she's very concerned about what's happening to those with pre-settled status and and I'm just going to read a little bit of her letter. Well, you know, a couple of paragraphs that are relevant. And then I'm going to have to go into um, the legislation, which comes in on the 7th of May, which is only next week. That's going to impact a lot of people. OK, so what she says is, Dear Black Bright, I look at your channel on YouTube and I'm curious on your response to info I received yesterday on on a law that government is rushing to sneak in on the 7th of May 2019. I received this information from an attorney. I also wanted to make you aware that the government will be introducing new social security regulations and homelessness regulations on the 7th of May, which will exclude those on pre-settled status from accessing benefits and homelessness assistance in most cases. The pre-settled programme was introduced for EU nationals living in the UK after Brexit, which has not happened yet. OK, so what it meant was I had to kind of look for this legislation. Now, there's no news on it, which is what I normally go by. So I had to go to the House of Commons and look through their bills and see which bills was coming up on the 7th of May. So and then because of that, it's in, alert, it's in convoluted jargon that I can't really interpret correctly, which is why I'm going to read it. Um, basically, what it from a basic interpretation is that those on pre-settled status are going to be treated like illegal foreign nationals. That's the crux of it. But having said that, um, I've got, um, I'm going to read a couple of paragraphs from the No Recourse to Public Funds Network. And then I'm going to go into the relevant part of the statutory instrument which is the result of why they are doing this, from what I understand. Please don't quote me on it, need legal advice because it's tech. this is technical stuff and I'm not a technician and I'm not a professional in this area, I'm not an expert. Okay, the changes, that I um, there's a lot of it, so I'm only going to take out what is relevant. Local authorities currently spend at least 43.5 million per year funding accommodation and financial support for destitute migrants with no recourse to public funds to safeguard the welfare of children within families, adults with care needs and young people living in care, leaving care. It will be essential that any arrangements for EU nationals do not lead to this safety net being an even greater burden on local government. So at the moment, it's costing them 43.5 million and that is a burden. And what they are saying is that once um, the UK leaves the EU, there's going to be an even greater financial burden. The charges that will apply to EU nationals after UK leaves EU will raise the following concerns for local government. Where EU nationals are recognised as having a long term future in the UK through the EU settlement scheme, but do not have an automatic entitlement to income based benefits, it will fall on local government to fund accommodation and financial support for those that are vulnerable who have children. So basically what they're saying is once that EU settlement scheme Sorry about that. Once that EU settlement scheme comes into place, they're assuming that there might be people who don't have recourse to public funds and they're, they're then going to be the responsibility of the government. Um, EU nationals who do not successfully obtain leave to remain by the time free movement ends will be subject to sanctions on work, benefits and other services and are likely to experience destitution 
which may adversely impact on communities and increase demand for social services support. Now, this is the reason why that lady, I don't want to go too much in her personal history, but this is the reason why she's concerned, because she's concerned about being homeless. And the actual act that's applicable is called the Allocation of Housing and Homelessness in brackets, eligibility in brackets, England in brackets, amendment in brackets, EU's exit in brackets, regulations 2019. So this is the one that they're amending on the 7th of May. Anyway, going back to this, I'm not, it's not going to be very long because it can be quite um, tenuous. Communicating the charges to EU residents and assisting the most vulnerable to secure their status will be essential activities for local authorities, given the risk that will arise if people fail to obtain leave to remain. But this will give rise to additional resource pressures. When free movement ends and EU nationals are subject to the UK immigration rules, the number of people who have the no recourse to public funds conditions imposed or who are on a 10 year settlement route will increase. Both give rise to child poverty and create barriers to integration and community cohesion. OK, so now what they intend to do um, basically effective the 7th of May, a right to reside by virtue of having been granted limited leave to enter or remain in the UK under the Immigration Act 1971 in brackets three by virtue of appendix EU to the immigration rules made under section three of the act is to be disregarded. In other words, um, the right, a right to reside by virtue of having granted limited leave to enter or remain is going to be disregarded. So whereas before the act, they did have a right to reside by virtue of having been granted limited leave to remain, that will no longer apply. That is my interpretation. And it also applies to other persons from abroad who are not eligible for housing assistance. So um, they're supposed to have that, um, forget what you call it, when you have to prove um, that resident status, you know, that you've, you're have you accessing doctors and all that kind of thing. I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, I'm just going to read the explanatory note. So those of you who may be able to interpret it and tell fellow people, the explanatory note in the statutory instrument, 2019 number 861, exiting the European Union, England, um, it's coming into force on the 7th of May, according to this. And it says the Secretary of State makes the following regulations in exercise of the powers conferred by all these sections that don't mean anything to you. OK, the explanatory note is these regulations amend the provisions of the Allocation of Housing and Homelessness Eligibility England Regulations 2006, Section 1, 2006, Oblique 1294, the Eligibility Regulations, which determine which persons from abroad, other than persons subject to immigration control, are ineligible for an allocation of housing accommodation under part six of the housing act 1996 c.53 52 or for housing assistant under part seven of the act i mean a lot of this i mean you're not going to be able to make head or tail of it because and i think that's a problem they quote all of these acts and all of these sections and unless you go to the sections it doesn't make sense and who's going to understand all those acts and who's got time to be going to all those sections? All you need to know is the basics. So, you know, um, I'm not going to repeat all these sections because it's double Dutch. It's double Dutch to you, probably. And it's double Dutch to me. Anyway, under what I what I will read out is what I think is makes a little bit of sense without all of that stuff in it. That all the technical stuff. OK, under regulations four and six of the eligibility regulations, a person who is not subject to immigration control is ineligible for an allocation of social housing and for housing assistance, respectively, where they are not habitually resident in the United Kingdom, the Channel Islands, the Isle of Man or the Republic of Ireland. 
or their only right to reside in those places is as an EEA job seeker or as a family member of an EEA job seeker. An initial right to reside for a period not exceeding three months under the immigration in brackets European Economic Area close brackets regulation 2016 C, because they are non-EEA nationals, primary carer of an EEA dependent under the EEA regulations. Now, what is that saying in English? It's saying that a person who is not subject to the immigration control, which means a citizen, is ineligible so anybody other than a citizen, ah, this is what it's saying. Anything, anyone other than a citizen or a resident or a permanent resident is ineligible for an allocation of social housing and for housing assistance. Ah, so this is what she was referring to because what she's saying is, is that she's got a biometric card. It runs out in 2023. Um, She's concerned um, that if she doesn't get her indefinite leave to remain, she's going to be made homeless. And now I understand why. Um, the second bit is um, regulations three in brackets A and regulate and 4A amend those provisions. The effect of the amendment is to maintain the st status quo so that where a person with a right to reside of the type mentioned above is also granted limited leave to enter or remain in the United Kingdom pursuant to Appendix EU of the Immigration Rules. This does not affect their eligibility. <sighs> the effect of the amendment is to maintain the status quo so that where a person with right to reside. OK, so what's more or less it's saying is that if you've got a right to reside, you're OK. Okay, it's not going to affect your eligibility. It's only going to affect those who don't have a right to reside, which is the same thing, whether or not you're a citizen or you're a permanent resident. Um, regulations 3B and 4B amend the in an incorrect cross-reference to the Immigration European Economic Area Regulations 2006 and some other regulations. Whilst an EEA regulation 2006 has been revoked by the Immigration European Economic Area Regulations 2016 and some sections. Uh, they're supposed to be read in corresponding paragraphs anyway. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna worry about that. An impact assessment has not been produced for this instrument as no impact on the private or voluntary sector is foreseen. So they haven't done an impact assessment, so they're not really, they don't really know the impact of this legislation. But from what it's saying, it does look like those people who are in limbo, like all of those people who are waiting for their indefinitely to remain to be approved, and who have no recourse to public funds, that is what's going to happen to those on pre-settled status. They're going to be in the same boat. So I hope that wasn't too complicated. I couldn't make it any easier. I hope for that lady who was asking me about it, this kind of helps clarify um, the situation. That's all for now. Bye bye.